when I first got into urban exploration, there's a place called the Lad School in Rhode Island, and it was uh, a mental asylum that had been abandoned for 30 plus years. And this was before I knew anything about safety and urban exploration. I took one step into one of the buildings, my foot went through the floor and it was a 12 foot drop to the basement. And that's when I realized, okay, there's a lot more to this than just walking in with the camera and seeing what I can capture. So yeah, there's a danger to it, but I'm aware of it. I'm very aware of it. I'm aware of my own mortality. Um, I think you kind of have to be when you're looking at abandoned places and how quickly things can go by the wayside. My name is Jason Allard. I'm a filmmaker and urban explorer here in Rhode Island. Place used to be. This was once a massive social spot and boasted a giant screen tower design popular during the late 1940s. It was so big. I have a series on YouTube called Abandoned From Above and it's where I explore and document interesting abandoned places throughout New England and show people why they deserve our respect and attention. The cars have been replaced by trees, and the screen hasn't shown a movie since 1996. Welcome to the abandoned Sutton. Bay. When I look up urban exploration or abandoned videos on YouTube, or I look up historic videos on YouTube, there's two main types, right? You have like on the historic side, it could be basically a PowerPoint slideshow where they're just giving you the facts. And if you go on the abandoned side, it's people walking through abandoned places with a camera point of view, and there's really no narrative there. And I enjoy both types, but when I make my video, I want to combine the two of them and then make it as exciting as possible. Before we explore, we got to go back to the start of drive-ins so you can fully appreciate exactly what we're walking through here. The first pad to drive in. When people watch my videos, by the time the video wraps, if they can just walk away with a better appreciation for local history, hidden history that we have around us, then I feel like I did my job. And if they were entertained while they did it, then that's a huge bonus. So each one of my videos, there's a lot that goes into it. I'm a one man team for the most part. I do have some very talented friends that join me on these shoots. When it comes to scripting, voiceover, editing, that's all me. I do this in my spare time. This is a passion project of mine. So I have to make sure that the spot is worth it. So I do at least a week of research and building the script so that I know the exact shots I need to get to tell the story. And then from there, I come up with a shot list. I come up with everything I need to do day of. And then I pack up my gear bag. I typically use two main cameras. It's my drone and the DJI Osmo Pocket. So it's very compact and small so I can set up and break down easily. What comes next is the longest part of the process and that's editing the video. There's a lot that goes into it and for it to only be one person, um, it can get overwhelming sometimes just because there's so much that you have to focus on. There's so many moving parts in my brain when I think about what goes into a video, but it's the most rewarding thing when I finally hit upload and being able to share that with so many people. I was just creating these videos for me. Like I was just having fun, finding the history, telling the stories, and then kind of like improving my filmmaking process and editing skills. So for people, to be able to enjoy that now and to share in my excitement has been awesome from this YouTube channel. So each place that I visit was abandoned or forgotten for a reason. And they're all different. So that means that they all have different stories. A lot of these places hold a lot of significance to many people because of what they meant to them while they were growing up. Sometimes it's where they worked, it's where they went to school, it's where they celebrated good times. And that's all been forgotten for the most part, at least when I go to visit them. So I see it as a way to preserve those memories, to honor what made them so important in the first place, and then to show what they could be in the future, if there are redevelopment plans, if there are preservation plans. So there's a lot that goes into it when I think about visiting these abandoned places. And a lot of it's just, you know, my passion for filmmaking and storytelling. The place that's the most special to me regarding abandoned places is the place that really combined my passion for filmmaking and urban exploration. And that's the abandoned Woonsocket Middle School in Rhode Island. And it's a school that I actually attended from the sixth grade to the eighth grade. The first time that we stepped foot in the school since it had been abandoned, and actually since I had been a student there, was completely surreal. And there's a term that comes to mind, it's called a grail. This is within the urbex community. And a grail is something that hasn't been 
touched by vandals, arsonists, hasn't been redeveloped. It's just essentially stuck in time. And these are extremely rare. To go into a place as large as the Woonsocket Middle School and see it completely stuck in time, books were still on the desks, writing was still on the blackboards, there were still chairs in the hallways, posters, student projects, everything was left the same way it was. We went into one of the basement gyms and the floors at this point had already been cracked and warped and there were still basketballs just laying around, you know. It's like they just left, locked the doors, and then no one was able to go in there since we went back into that school. You know, you can imagine everything is completely covered in dust and it's dead silent, which is probably the most eerie thing when you're walking through a school, you expect to hear kids laughing, students talking, you know, faculty talking, and then it was just nothing because it's just closed up, windows are closed, dead still. And it's the most surreal thing, especially Having been a student there, it's, it's a lot to take in. My biggest advice for people just getting into filmmaking is to find something that they're passionate about or they already have an interest in. Even if it may seem boring to other people, when you're starting out, you're not making it for other people. If you go in with the expectation that you're gonna get 100,000 views, a million views, then you're already doing it for the wrong reasons. You gotta do it because it's fulfilling to yourself and it feels good creatively. So once you go down that path, then you're gonna evolve naturally. You're gonna you know, get in your rhythm and you're gonna be able to improve your own style. And I think that's where the passion really grows is when you start with something you're already interested in. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified for when we upload a new video, hit that bell icon above. If you'd like to see more of Jason Allard's work, see the links in the description below. Special thanks to Filmmaker Dave from Run of the Mill and Jason Allard for additional footage. Until then, see you in the next video.